Hello and welcome to another powerful Genuine Healing Group SFT Tapping event. This one is called Reclaiming Spiritual Clarity. It's a slightly uh, odd phrasing, but we are recording this on World Mental Health Day. We're going to draw the linkage between mental health and spiritual clarity throughout the course of this event. I'm Marvin Schneider. And I'm Jen Ward. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. Um, look, it's mental World Mental Health Day, and uh, I think... I think it's a really important topic, mental health. And the interesting thing is that uh, a lot more people in the public eye, uh, celebrities and other people in the public eye, are talking about mental health issues and their own experiences with mental health issues. I think that's a real positive and we're going to take up the mantle and, uh, well, you're going to, provide a lot of insights about mental health and uh, my hope through uh, or expectation through the course of this event is that we will be helping a lot of people with a pathway to uh, dealing with uh, the mental health issues and being fully functioning. So over to you, Jen. Yeah, well, there's a lot of stigma with anyone having in, having tangential experiences, right? So a lot of people are afraid to speak their truth to, to admit to having experiences with angels, divinities, spiritual um, conversations inwardly because they're afraid of being pigeonholed as having mental illness, right? Right. So so I think what you're saying is a lot of your clients who are spiritually aware, spiritually awakened, having tangential experiences are struggling to uh, work with those experiences. And so you can talk about that in terms of your, you know, your client, private client sessions. But there is another aspect to this. Um, I, actually, let me ask you this question, Jen. For those that are having... Uh, the darker end of the mental health um, experiences, is it your sense that they are in fact having spiritual experiences or are they just experiences that are outside of the range of what, uh, I hate the term, but, uh, you know, outside of the range of normal experiences? Are they so spiritual experiences? But babies, for me, every every experience is a spiritual experience. I mean, I tell you that all the time. This is a spiritual experience when we're, you know, helping the tree cut up big limb off him that has been bothering him. That's a spiritual experience. So, so that's the wrong preference. But what I can tell you is, by the way, some of my clients aren't like me. They're not spiritually inclined. They're like dead as a doornail as far as perceiving an energy but they need the help so they come to me but there is an aspect of just because you don't acknowledge your past lives your your stint on the astral causal mental realms doesn't mean that those experiences aren't happening it just means that you're cutting yourself off physically from them to function in an agreeable um, main street state of being but let me give you an example. I had this mother call me about her son, her grown son who was hearing voices, wanted to kill himself. He was being visited by demons, right? All these things that you would think are so horrific and, you know, how are you going to deal with that? Comes to find out in his past lifetimes, a couple of the past lifetimes that came through was his life as a... Um, not an altar boy because it wasn't Christian, but it was more Episcopal. So it was like he was like uh, the Episcopal version of an altar boy. So he was like dealing with the priest and the priest was, you know, forcing him to have oral sex on him. Right. And so in that lifetime, that priest was threatening him a lot, threatening him. You tell anybody, you know, and, you know, and putting the fear of God into him. And he was also doing this, this thing to rebel. At the same time, he was going out with his friends in the 
in the cemetery, which was next to the church, and doing this um, ritualistic kind of ceremonies. And they actually put him in the grave and terrified him that way. So, so what was happening in this lifetime is the voices that he was hearing were actually past life engrams of the priest threatening him and the terror of being put in the grave. So those two things combined would just melt, merge into this, this thing that he didn't understand. So in his, our private session, I pulled those apart for him and helped him release those engrams and to have more of a clear footing on understanding. He got over the voices right away and he didn't want to kill himself anymore. Do you think there is a uh, strong connection like that to other experiences, uh, you know, at the more more extreme negative end of the mental health spectrum? I, I guess what I'm asking you is, are in your experience, are all um, <clears throat> challenging mental health experiences, past life related, that can be dealt with in the way that you deal with pretty much all of your clients. It doesn't have to be past life. It could be earlier lifetime, like the abuse that happens in utero or before your cognitive of speech and understanding. But not only people with mental illness, but I would say most of the world is filled up with that kind of experience. And, and what makes someone mentally ill is their ability to deny the 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 intangibles of life is like what's happening from past lifetimes. They can block out what's bleeding through from past lifetimes and past experiences. So what's the pathway? Uh, what's the resolve here? So um, I know my results with working with people with um, mental illness and stuff, it's just untangling uh, this big ball of of trauma and it's validating i've actually because i can do medical intuitive i've seen people who have the bipolar and i've seen the tangles in their brain and for some reason i'm able to with my intentions go through and unthread all those tangles in the brain and another thing that happens with people who are what you say like me spiritual and stuff Another problem in mental illness for them is they go into these groups and what you, what happens when you go into these groups to learn how to be more spiritual is you let anyone, you, you partner up and you let other people work on you. I don't really suggest that because uh, people I've helped who were having really bad issues with like mental illness, it was because they opened up to a class and thinking they were safe. And the instructors did not, were not able to protect them from what was happening within the group. And these individuals were inflicting their, their issues onto the person they're working on. That happens more than people understand. That's why you have to really vet who you're going to have energy work from. It's because, because when, when there's a facilitator, facilitator, the training to be a facilitator, uh, a good facilitator, is so stringent energetically that that like I'm always watching, I'm always protecting, and and always preventing this mental, this thing or this issue and whatever to come into the client. That's why these group sessions are so cleansing that we're doing here. I don't and you know I don't allow. Michelle or Trace or anyone on this call to cross over and talk to each other, you know, with without coming through me first, because that's a way that and I've watched that happen in groups where they inflict their issues. Oh, hi, Therese. And you're just going to inflict your issue onto that person. So a lot of it is is not only projection, but infliction from other people and such. So you were talking about your experiences in being able to untangle um, the threads uh, in uh, bipolar clients in particular, but I'm going to guess that something similar occurs in a lot of the work that you do with 
uh, people that have mental health issues uh, of a different nature. And the interesting thing that I want to draw out here is this idea of untangling a web, a messy web of either thoughts, emotions, um, other things, and connect that with the idea of clarity, because this tapping event is called Reclaiming Spiritual Clarity. And so my sense of things is uh, a lot of people that have mental health issues, the affliction is a fog. And in the fog, you can't see through a path forward, which is quite debilitating. And so finding clarity in understanding, you know, what, you know, to the extent that they are past life issues, you know, what are the root causes, and then giving the client uh, a pathway to resolve is gold. And, and um, so what is it that you do that is so different to mainstream therapy? Because, look, you know, there is a large professional uh, body of people that dedicate their lives to helping their clients that have mental health issues, depression, bipolar, any other, any number of other um, categorizations of mental health issues. What is it? And 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 you're not a licensed, you know, um, professional practitioner in this space. Mm -hmm. uh, you your credentials come from the University of Life. Yeah. And having many past lives, being a spiritual healer. So what is it that you do that is so unique that maybe the mainstream might want to bring on board in their practice? Okay, so when someone meets, by the way, I've, I have a lot of experience meeting with therapists. So it's not like I haven't studied it from inside out. I have much experience with the mentally ill from the inside out. And... um what I found with therapists is the good ones will listen and from their listening, they can draw out issues from the person. They can draw the energy out, but it takes a lot of training for them not to absorb that issue. That's why um, mental health therapists are one of the highest forms of suicide is because they're taking on the client's issues. I, what I do that, What I do that they don't, is I keep the issues bundled. Like when you go to a therapist, you can share all the sadness, the pain, or whatever. I don't indulge with in that because my nervous system would be destroyed with just one or two clients because I'm so sensitive. It would go into my nervous system and just sit there, and I would just cry. And, and you see when someone gets in, right? Like you see how it happens with me. I, I'm off a little bit, even now with such heightened training. So what I do is I keep the issues bundled. I don't allow the client to talk about them because if they knew how to help themselves, they would have done it already. So talking from them and, and just reassuring them does not do it. You keep the issues bundled and, bundled and you pull out the whole issue. So where a therapist will be pulling out an issue like one tissue from a tissue box, I'll be taking out a crate of tissue boxes. <laughs> I'll be taking out the whole delivery. But but and still in doing that, I can tell them what the core issues are because I see the past lifetimes. I see the horrific issues. I identify with them because I've experienced so much horrific stuff, which is awesome for the client because I hold that vibration for whatever it ails them, and I can connect with it without having it affect me if they don't fight with me. So you said something that's really important. Traditional therapy is really about talking it out, right, between the therapist and the client, right? So the therapist basically cr creates the space to allow the client to talk it out. Um, yeah. You don't, you don't do that, as you, as you, you know, right. <laughs> articulately said. And that's with a good therapist. I've had many therapists, well, I've been able to make my therapist cry and given them a release. So you have that where when the dynamics are, are pristine, that's what happens. But I've had so many sessions with, with, with therapists who are working out their issues, and they use me there as a sounding board. I'm there to get help, 
and they just talk about their lives and and I find it really fascinating. I've stopped seeing this guy because he was so arrogant. He just I just sat there and heard about his life and his daughter and everything and he was just so arrogant. And 15, 20 years later I visited the same office and he was the head of it. So so it's frustrating for those of us who, who don't feel I have a voice, go in, in a vulnerable position, you still don't have a voice. Because once you once you fill out that little form and say, yes, I feel this, yes, I feel this, yes, I've heard this, yes, then you have that stigma of, yes, you have depression, yes, you have mental illness, yes, you have this or that. And so, and, um, and then you're treated differently. It's like you put to the side and stuff and, and treat it as not an equal, which is part of the protection of the therapist, but they're still listening to all the problems and not practicing good mental hygiene for themselves. The point that I was making is that traditional therapy is grounded in kind of talking it out. You don't mm -hmm. do that. Um, you basically get to the core issue more intuitively through um, seeing the past lives and the engrams uh, and seeing the tangled web and then untangling it so that the client doesn't. And by the way, if the client knew what the core issue was, then presumably they could, you know, if they had that clarity, they could deal with it somewhat effectively um my sense is is that the majority of the time they don't have that clarity so what you're doing is you're providing that clarity but more importantly without talking it out you are taking it out right and i shouldn't say that i don't listen to the client but i do listen to the client's higher self right. so that inner compass that someone's trying to get to 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 listen to themselves that's what hopefully happens in private sessions, you want the takeaway from private sessions is I'm teaching the client to listen to their higher self. So at first there's a struggle with the, the client, they're fighting me and, and trying to do it on a very base nature of like what they tell me. And I need to get them to shut up, but trust me. And so I pull out stuff from their past lives that I couldn't possibly know. So they realize that I am tapping into something and the more they trust me, the more they open up their energy and their higher self is able to give me direction and what they need and will show me the past life trauma that this poor individual has dealt with that's um, taken them off course so, so poorly. So for those that are finding, Jen, your work for, for the first time uh, through this video, through this tapping event, what I'd strongly encourage you to do is to jump onto the Genuine Healing website, genuinehealing.com with a J, and look in the video archive. There are um, about 100 past client private session recordings. They're typically about an hour long. They're dealing with a whole plethora of issues. But, you know, uh, the, and you'll get to see how Jen works. So do that. Uh, as we get some time, I'm putting a, a lot of these private client sessions up on YouTube as well and other avenues, uh, but it does take a lot of time to get all these things produced and recorded and uploaded and categorized and all of that stuff. So, But there is a back catalogue of about 100 of these client sessions already on the Genuine Healing website. So jump onto the Genuine Healing website and keep an eye out on YouTube and Facebook and various other things, uh, podcast channels, um, where uh, as we get the time, we're putting them up there as well. Can I just tell you something else that I've observed being um, close to the mental health industry and and whatever? There were times when I was in group settings and there were people with definite issues, medications, medications can make you loopy and whatever. So I befriended a bunch of people who were considered mentally ill. And for my, for myself, I couldn't understand. They were just 
you know, they were a little bit different, but I thought they were wonderful people. And then we had family day. And then I met their families. And, and in more cases than not, the person who had the mental illness was the kinder, gentler version of their family, and they were demonized for it. I, I was convinced that some of the family members kept their, their family member medicated and demonized because they didn't agree with them or because it was a punishment. And, um, and I hope that's not the case. The people with money, I saw this one girl that was absolutely zoned out of medication, but then I spent time with her family and her mother was a royal bitch. And I absolutely believe that her mother kept her medicated and, and had the doctors in her pocket because they had money, whatever. But there were other cases of this where these, these people who I saw with personality issues, I met their families and they were the sweetest version of their family. So there's that also. We could talk endlessly around mental health issues, your experience in and around that, both in your own personal life, but also working with your clients. Uh, but one of the more practical things that we can do in celebration or in recognition of World Mental Health Day is to do a group tapping event, uh, which is what this is. <laughs> uh, we've got about 50 or thereabouts SFT taps that are all geared towards helping um, around various mental health issues. Hi everyone. We are working around the clock to help as many people as possible. It's a two-man operation and it's non-stop. We can really use your help though. By liking our videos, commenting and sharing, you are helping others all over the world to find us. All of our content is free because not everyone is as fortunate as you and I. Please consider becoming a genuine healing supporter. It'll help us cover the costs of our overhead, including doggy and kitty kibble. Follow the link below to support us. I truly believe that when you support others, the universe supports you. And I know a thousand percent that when you support us, I support you right back. We have in the studio our regular Zoom guests. Thank you very much for joining us again. They're going to help and participate at their synergy in this tapping. Jen, for those that aren't familiar with tapping, SFT tapping, can you just quickly explain what's going to go on and then we'll get into some taps and we'll do some commentary in and around some of the taps uh, as we get inspired. So I just want to, before we do that, I just want to encourage anyone who's, who's stigmatized with mental illness or any issues, do these, do these taps that we're about to do, do them with us and feel the validation of where you are. So you feel like lots of times people with mental illness diagnosis feel isolated and alone like nobody understands them what i found actually the the feeling of being different or thinking you're different is actually the commonality that that binds us all everybody if they they'll admit it to themselves they feel different or isolated or misunderstood in some way so so find the validation in doing these tasks and feel if you need, feel my love and nurturing through them because I'm capable of nurturing and loving you through this. So I'm going to give everyone these statements one at a time. Each statement, you're going to say it three times, will tap on the top of your head, a fourth time will tap in your chest, and a fifth time will tap in your abdomen. And I hope you stick with it because I really think that people who are struggling with issues can find some benefit from doing these. All right, you wanna try? The stigma of thinking outside of the box is eradicated in all moments. The stigma of thinking outside the box is eradicated in all moments. The stigma of thinking outside the box is eradicated in all moments. The stigma of thinking outside the box is eradicated in all moments. The stigma of thinking outside the box is eradicated in all moments. The stigma of thinking outside the box is eradicated in all moments. Feeling insane for having intangible experiences is eradicated in all moments.
Feeling insane for having intangible experiences is eradicated in all moments. Feeling insane for having intangible experiences is eradicated in all moments. Feeling insane for having intangible experiences is eradicated in all moments. Feeling insane for having intangible experiences is eradicated in all moments. Feeling insane for having intangible experiences is eradicated in all moments. By the way, being psychically curious is not always a good idea. A lot of people play this game, the Ouija board, which is actually opening up a portal of psychic energy for, for things that you don't understand. You don't have you don't have the experience to deal with it. So I found a direct relationship between people who play the Ouija board and girls who cut their arms, cutting. Because what's happening in that, in that instance is a lot of um, mean-spirited energies are coming through and, and causing the individuals to do that just to get a cheap thrill. So. So, but I think what you're drawing in that particular tap is a relationship between people having intangible experiences and more and more people are having intangible experiences, by the way. Um, you know, the more that there is a spiritual awakening, it's almost by definition, uh, you are having intangible experiences. And, but that doesn't mean that you, you know, you are, have mental health issues. You're just having intangible right. experiences that, a lot of people around you probably don't understand. Uh, and then there is this stigmatization around that. And I think I was saying earlier at the top of this uh, video that uh, a lot of your clients, not all of them, but a lot of your clients are having intangible experiences as part of their spiritual awakening and are just struggling to, you know, understand them, deal with them and integrate them as part of their um, you know, day-to-day -day lives. But even, even the straight-laced business people that I deal with, they have these experiences and they, they're they just better at blocking them out or compartmentalizing them and stuff. But I believe everybody's having some kind of experiences. And if they're not, you know. Matter of degrees, but, I have my intangible experiences in the dream state, but other people have very vivid uh intangible experiences in the wakened state and uh i i'm glad i don't because i would find mm. that very difficult to deal with but mm. at least when i'm having these intangible experiences in the dream state it's like um you know i can kind of deal with it at that level and then when i'm fully conscious i can put it into perspective and still function in a, you know. I think you have these experiences all the time, but you've turned the volume down on them so low that you, they don't they don't um, show up for you. So, Jen, you said that um, you know you have these intangible experiences like twenty four seven. It's kind of pretty much a core part of your existence. And I was saying that I don't, uh, and you were saying that. Well, in fact, you think I do, but I've just turned the volume down. So um, the, the interesting question that comes out of it is if I have deliberately turned the volume down, presumably for the purpose of me being able to function in whatever capacity I need to function in, then that kind of implies that I have the ability to turn the volume up. Mm-hmm. All right. So, so number one, I don't know how to do that. But, but secondly, the next question is, who would want to do that? Because here's the question. Um, my sense is that if, if I was able to turn the volume up so that I had the intensity and regularity of the experiences that you do, my sense is that I wouldn't be able to get out of bed and therefore I wouldn't be able to function. And so my question is, who would want to turn the volume up? So, but that's that's your stigma of it. That's your fear of, of what I go through. So, so I think I think a lot of people would 
want to turn it up if they saw a selfish benefit in it. So if turning up the volume meant that you could tune in and be more in tune with the creativity of your clients or whatever, or you could connect more to the clients or you could help them better, you may want to. But from my vantage point, who would want to turn it down? Because also I'm able to turn it down at any time. And, um, and I don't choose to because I know that where the current mainstream is, to me it's insane, wars, dictators, selfishness, control, lies. Who would want to, con who would want to turn that down when the world needs more of what I can hold space for? And by the way, there's, there's a lot of magical experiences and moments that happen from when you turn the volume up. And by the way, the way that you turn the volume up or down is what you agree with. So when I say something like you think is foo-foo, you'll say, no, that's ridiculous. That's you turning the volume down. And when I acknowledge something and I get a, um, inspiration from the birds and the birds are talking about us or whatever, and I go into my imagination and I, it's like a children's storybook of imagination where we interact and nature and, and, and animals are a part of our beingness or I personify what the dogs are going through. Lots of times I'm right when I talk about what they're saying. But the more that I do that, I'm turning the volume up. So what's happening with our dynamics, you and I, at total opposite polarities, is all day long you're trying to turn the volume down so I can function in this world. And all the time I'm turning the, the volume up so I can connect more with you in this sweet spot. So a lot of people that are, um, in the spiritual community, they are trying to turn the volume up in a couple of ways. Um, one is to propagate these outer body experiences. Um, they're trying to get out of. They're trying to. They're trying to get out of the body. Another way that they do that is uh, trying to bring in these, you know, third eye, you know, experiences. Or another version of that is having these kundalini experiences. So these are these sort of big moment, spiritual moment, you know, tangen um, uh, you know, tangential experiences. And a lot of people do that because they think that they're, and you're right about this, they think that there is some selfish benefit. It'll, it'll, it'll give them something. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't consciously pursue those things. But that doesn't mean that I'm not in tune with a higher self um, and can tap into creativity. Um, you know, my sense is that, you know, creativity and innovation is the core of, you know, the human experience. So, you know, you definitely want to have those. Um, but do I want to turn up the dial to have them? Because my sense, you know, in, 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 in these intangible experiences... Um, I, I'm I'm not sure about that. My, my sorry, sorry. My entire proposition here is, from my perspective, I don't know how I would function in society by having the twenty four seven dial that you have. But that's why you married me. You get the best of both worlds. You get to stay <laughs> on your volume, and then you get to like explore all of this from afar. So you're welcome. Anyway, um, anyway, the debate about the volume is an interesting debate, but we're going to help through these taps, um, help anyone who's wherever you are on the dial, we're going to help you with the taps. So perhaps we should keep on with the taps. Being stigmatized as crazy is eradicated in all moments. Being stigmatized as crazy is eradicated in all moments. Being stigmatized as crazy is eradicated in all moments. Being stigmatized as crazy is eradicated in all moments. Being stigmatized as crazy is eradicated in all moments. Being stigmatized as crazy is eradicated in all moments. Losing your voice for thinking and feeling different is eradicated in all moments. Losing your voice for thinking and feeling different is eradicated in all moments. Losing your voice for thinking and feeling different is eradicated in all moments. 
Losing your voice for thinking and feeling different is eradicated in all moments. Losing your voice for thinking and feeling different is eradicated in all moments. Losing your voice for thinking and feeling different is eradicated in all moments. Previous, the next tip is a, a good example of someone stigmatizing you for for identifying with other than straight. A lot of people in the conservative consider being gay or or trans as mentally ill what they don't understand is i don't know the whole thing about you know preferences for gay and straight i know that people as they evolve they embrace more of both sides of their sexuality because they're tapping into more of their lifetimes in past lifetimes we were both gay we were both male and female so when I've done sessions with clients that were were female but gay, they needed some experiences being in the female body, but they were so terrified of what happens when they were at the mercy of a man in a sexual experience that they had the aversion to having a sexual experience with a man. So they their preference was to be with a female. So they were identifying, they were, it's not that cut and dry, but it was like they were protecting themselves from the trauma of past lifetimes and their sexual preference. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. I think it's uh, really important that we are connecting uh, the idea of um, gender fluidity with the perception that that is somehow, somehow mentally reflection of some mental illness. I, I think it's incredibly important that we're doing this work. Yeah, and if we can comfort anyone and say, just relax, who you are is so special. Even these little children, who you are is so special. Don't change it for other people. Being considered mentally ill for identifying with other than straight is eradicated in all moments. Being considered mentally ill for identifying with other than straight is eradicated in all moments. Being considered mentally ill for identifying with other than straight is eradicated in all moments. Being considered mentally ill for identifying with other than straight is eradicated in all moments. Being considered mentally ill for identifying with other than straight is eradicated in all moments. Being considered mentally ill for identifying with other than straight is eradicated in all moments. Trying to appear straight, sane, or conventional to fit in is eradicated in all moments. Trying to appear straight, sane, or conventional to fit in is eradicated in all moments. Trying to appear straight, sane, or conventional to fit in is eradicated in all moments. Trying to appear straight, sane, or conventional to fit in is eradicated in all moments. Trying to appear straight, sane, or conventional to fit in is eradicated in all moments. Trying to appear straight, sane, or conventional to fit in is eradicated in all moments. Being heavily medicated for being different is eradicated in all moments. Being heavily medicated for being different is eradicated in all moments. Being heavily medicated for being different is eradicated in all moments. Being heavily medicated for being different is eradicated in all moments. Being heavily medicated for being different is eradicated in all moments. Being heavily medicated for being different is eradicated in all moments. The narrow no. band of sanity is exponentially widened in all moments. The narrow band of sanity is exponentially widened in all moments. The narrow band of sanity is exponentially widened in all moments. The narrow band of sanity is exponentially widened in all moments. The narrow band of sanity is exponentially widened in all moments. The narrow band of sanity is exponentially widened in all moments. Being demonized for needing meds to stay balanced is eradicated in all moments. Being demonized for needing meds to stay balanced is eradicated in all moments. Being demonized for needing meds to stay balanced is eradicated in all moments. 
being demonized for needing meds to stay balanced is eradicated in all moments. Being demonized for needing meds to stay balanced is eradicated in all moments. Being demonized for needing meds to stay balanced is eradicated in all moments. Being randomly judged as normal or crazy is eradicated in all moments. Being randomly judged as normal or crazy is eradicated in all moments. Being randomly judged as normal or crazy is eradicated in all moments. Being randomly judged as normal or crazy is eradicated in all moments. Being randomly judged as normal or crazy is eradicated in all moments. Being randomly judged as normal or crazy is eradicated in all moments. Demonization of those who experience subtle realms is eradicated in all moments. Demonization of those who experience subtle realms is eradicated in all moments. Demonization of those who experience subtle realms is eradicated in all moments. Demonization of those who experience subtle realms is eradicated in all moments. Demonization of those who experience subtle realms is eradicated in all moments. Demonization of those who experience subtle realms is eradicated in all moments. The inability to discern between crazy and the subtle realms is eradicated in all moments. The inability to discern between crazy and the subtle realms is eradicated in all moments. The inability to discern between crazy and the subtle realms is eradicated in all moments. The inability to discern between crazy and the subtle realms is eradicated in all moments. The inability to discern between crazy and the subtle realms is eradicated in all moments. The inability to discern between crazy and the subtle realms is eradicated in all moments. Needing to be genius and your uniqueness to gain acceptance is eradicated in all moments. Needing to be genius in your uniqueness to gain acceptance is eradicated in all moments. Needing to be genius in your uniqueness to gain acceptance is eradicated in all moments. Needing to be genius in your uniqueness to gain acceptance is eradicated in all moments. Needing to be genius in your uniqueness to gain acceptance is eradicated in all moments. Needing to be genius in your uniqueness to gain acceptance is eradicated in all moments. Shutting down creativity and imagination to maintain an illusion of normalcy is eradicated in all moments. Shutting down creativity and imagination to maintain an illusion of normalcy is eradicated in all moments. Shutting down creativity and imagination to maintain an illusion of normalcy is eradicated in all moments. Shutting down creativity and imagination to maintain an illusion of normalcy is eradicated in all moments. Shutting down creativity and imagination to maintain an illusion of normalcy is eradicated in all moments. Shutting down creativity and imagination to maintain an illusion of normalcy is eradicated in all moments. Overemphasis <laughs> on normal is eradicated in all moments. Overemphasis 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 on normal is eradicated in all moments. All beings reject needing to clear the bar of normal in all moments. All beings reject needing to clear the bar of normal in all moments. All beings re reject needing to clear the bar of normal in all moments. All beings reject needing to clear the bar of normal in all moments. All beings reject needing to clear the bar of normal in all moments. All beings reject needing to clear the bar of normal in all moments. The reason I say all beings is because I watched this behavior in Milton, our little dog. Now, Milton <laughs> came, came to us really abused, and it's like his whole life was the abuse and fear. <laughs> but now that he's safe and the muscle memory of fear is, is waning away, he's, he doesn't know how to behave. It's like 
Maisie and Merle will be doing their thing and he'll be like walking around and like, is this normal? And he's trying, he's waiting for us to catch him and say, no, don't do that. And we don't because he's a, he can do whatever he wants. He can walk in the other room and whatever. Sometimes what he does is walk in the other room and pee on the laundry or something. But, you know, that's him figuring out what's normal and stuff. So it's really sweet to see him trying to stretch his propensity of what's he able to do when he gets the trauma out of the way. And other people, you see that with people, if they're not, if they're not bitching, complaining and griping, what, what do they do with their time? I'm not sure where uh, the corporate world is these days, but I remember there was a time when in the recruiting process, sitting a psych test was actually standard practice. Um, I don't know whether it is still standard practice, but you know, can you imagine being excluded from an ability to earn an income and have a professional career just because you don't clear the bar of the normal distribution curve um, in a psych yeah. test as part of a uh, entry exam for you know a job? Yes, actually, I can. I've been into these meetings and stuff where I had this great idea. I mean, this great idea. And nobody would listen to me. I would actually, this was for a, a, a religious group. They, I would actually leave the meetings crying because I couldn't be understood. Nobody would understand. They couldn't catch the concept that I had. And it was really genius until the local director of the area she i helped her with something and she she returned the favor by being the voice for my idea in the group and as soon as she pitched the idea oh everybody loved it it was amazing and it was very very successful for the area but it's so frustrating to have those ideas and not be able to convey them because people can't get past your package so just as a reflection of the fact that we're polar opposites, I'm going to, you know, you were talking about your bit. I'm going to come back to the corporate world. Uh, in a, yeah, isn't it funny how we're just bing-banging? <laughs> so I'll mm -hmm. just come back to the corporate world um, and uh, the mainstream society. I think the real challenge is uh, two things. Number one is to celebrate diversity in all its forms, including um, uh, neurodiversity. So there's that because there, I think there is a lot of genius out there that gets stigmatized as being, you know, um, outside of the bounds of uh, neurological constraint, right? And therefore it doesn't fit into normal, you know, um, uh, you know job descriptions and career paths. Um, so number one, celebrate diversity in all of its forms. Number two, I think the real challenge for the broader collective is how to integrate neurologically diverse people with all of their creativity, passion, and various other things into a fully functioning society. And then th uh, number three, if I can add a third one, is how to uh, compassionately <clears throat> work with those that just are um, that that just find it difficult to get out of bed every day because of their experiences. So there's the challenge for the broader collective. Yeah. And so those people who have trouble getting out of bed for it because of their experiences, they need to have a motivation to get out of bed. And usually their motivation isn't to meet people, you know, because that's not a pleasant experience for them or to make money because that's not their thing. What they need is a inner inspiration to do things and usually it's to help others to help the planet to help and intangible things so yeah all psychic streams of energy that create confusion and lack of clarity are dissipated in all moments all psychic streams of energy that create confusion and lack of clarity are dissipated in all moments all psychic streams of energy that create confusion and lack of clarity are dissipated in all moments. All psychic streams of energy that create confusion and lack of clarity are dissipated in all moments. 
All psychic streams of energy that create confusion and lack of clarity are dissipated in all moments. All psychic streams of energy that create confusion and lack of clarity are dissipated in all moments. The demonization of spiritual prowess is eradicated in all moments. The demonization of spiritual prowess is eradicated in all moments. The demonization of spiritual prowess is eradicated in all moments. The demonization of spiritual prowess is eradicated in all moments. The demonization of spiritual prowess is eradicated in all moments. The demonization of spiritual prowess is eradicated in all moments. The fear of our own inner exploration is eradicated in all moments. The fear of our own inner exploration is eradicated in all moments. The fear of our own inner exploration is eradicated in all moments. The fear of our own inner exploration is eradicated in all moments. The fear of our own inner exploration is eradicated in all moments. The fear of our own inner exploration is eradicated in all moments. The creation of a born lackluster reality is eradicated in all moments. The creation of a boring lackluster reality is eradicated in all moments. The creation of a boring lackluster reality is eradicated in all moments. The creation of a boring lackluster reality is eradicated in all moments. The creation of a boring lackluster reality is eradicated in all moments. The creation of a boring lackluster reality is eradicated in all moments. Jen, that tap reminds me of um, watching black and white TV in a world of uh, color TV. Yeah, baby, that's what we're talking about. So if I had to get up every day in, in the world that, that you like, the corporate world where everyone's just their job and it's just, that would be a death sentence to me. To you, um, I, I understand that. Um, but it is important that there are those for whom that wouldn't be a death sentence. My challenge, though, is, uh, you know, make the experience of that nine to five, if that's what it needs to be, uh, as, um, you know, engaging as possible. But that's the challenge is, you know, um, we do need jobs need to be done. Uh, we do need people to do jobs. Otherwise, the society will just collapse in a heap of a pile of muck. And um, the the real challenge for the broader collective is how to do both, have the structure and the linear aspects that a functioning society relies on, while also celebrating the diversity and the you know the the neurodiversity of the range within the collective. Because the thing is that you know the the practical reality from my experience, is that more and more people in the spiritually awakening realms are having experiences outside of the standardized normal psych tests. Yeah, so I guess that's right. So if you, if you stay and do the job that you have passion and purpose for, mm -hmm. that's a way to stay in the intangible as much as possible because you're drawn on your higher self and all your talents to do that job. So that makes sense. I can see that. All guardrails on creativity and spontaneity are removed in all moments. All guardrails on creativity and spontaneity are removed in all moments. All guardrails on creativity and spontaneity are removed in all moments. All guardrails on creativity and spontaneity are removed in all moments. All guardrails on creativity and spontaneity are removed in all moments. All guardrails on creativity and spontaneity are removed in all moments. Can I just draw this uh, home a little bit more? In the corporate world, uh, for those that are running corporations, large companies, even smaller companies, if you don't find a way to incorporate that level of diversity in your organizations, you will cease to exist. Simple as that. Um, so there's because because this is this is what's going on here. The workforce that you rely on 
to be in business is increasingly diverse. And if you don't create space for that, and if you straightjacket everything, you know, in your job descriptions, you will lose out on the vast majority of the um, uh, the, the the workforce. And it is it is a hundred percent legitimate to me that there are exponentially more people that are going out of mainstream career paths and becoming small micro entrepreneurs because they refuse to play the game of the corporate structure. Now, there the challenge for those people that are now in the micro entrepreneurial space is how to do that and you know how to be successful entrepreneurs you know as a one person show or a small person you know in, in small teams um but that's the trend it it's not going back and so the corporate world needs to work out how to deal with this plain and simple and let me give you an example in our lives of that babies so they they get it more or my people get it more whatever and so when i get the inspiration and this drives you crazy. I want to go to this store. I want to go to the craft store now. And you, that drives you nuts because it dry, knocks you out of your routine. And you say, no, can't we go next week? And it's like, no, we can't go next week because I'm not going to want to go next week. Because that spontaneity is being in the moment. That's where the life force is. If you put it off to next week, that I'm, I'm going to hit, I'm going to be in a different moment then. And so that never happens. So if we don't go in that moment, it's dead to me. And so when, when you, same thing with corporations, if they don't move when the inspiration is there, then they lose that opportunity and it's dead to them. All need to keep up with the Joneses is eradicated in all moments. All need to keep up with the Joneses is eradicated in all moments. All need to keep up with the Joneses is eradicated in all moments. All need to keep up with the Joneses is eradicated in all moments. All need to keep up with the Joneses is eradicated in all moments. All need to keep up with the Joneses is eradicated in all moments. Our fear of being perceived as different is eradicated in all moments. All fear of being perceived as different is eradicated in all moments. All fear of being perceived as different is eradicated in all moments. All fear of being perceived as different is eradicated in all moments. All fear of being perceived as different is eradicated in all moments. All fear of being perceived as different is eradicated in all moments. All blockages to showing up authentic are eradicated in all moments. All blockages to showing up authentic are eradicated in all moments. All blockages to showing up authentic are eradicated in all moments. All blockages to showing up authentic are eradicated in all moments. All blockages to showing up authentic are eradicated in all moments. All blockages to showing up authentic are eradicated in all moments. All engrams and muscle memory of being persecuted for speaking up are removed in all moments. All engrams and muscle memory of being persecuted for speaking up are removed in all moments. All engrams and muscle memory of being persecuted for speaking up are removed in all moments. All engrams and muscle memory of being persecuted for speaking up are removed in all moments. All engrams and muscle memory of being persecuted for speaking up are removed in all moments. All engrams and muscle memory of being persecuted for speaking up are removed in all moments. All engrams and muscle memory of being demonized and tortured for our authenticity are removed in all moments. All engrams and muscle memory of being demonized and tortured for our authenticity are removed in all moments. All engrams and muscle memory of being demonized and tortured for our authenticity are removed in all moments. All engrams and muscle memory of being demonized and tortured for our authenticity are removed in all moments. All engrams and muscle memory of being demonized and tortured for our authenticity are removed in all moments. All engrams and muscle memory of being demonized and tortured for our authenticity are removed in all moments. 
all fear of communicating within the subtle realms is eradicated in all moments. All fear of communicating within the subtle realms is er eradicated in all moments. All fear of communicating within the subtle realms is eradicated in all moments. All fear of communicating within the subtle realms is eradicated in all moments. All fear of communicating within the subtle realms is eradicated in all moments. All fear of communicating within the subtle realms is eradicated in all moments. All filtering out of our own creativity and imagination is eradicated in all moments. All filtering out of our own creativity and imagination is eradicated in all moments. All filtering out of our own creativity and imagination is eradicated in all moments. All filtering out of our own creativity and imagination is eradicated in all moments. All filtering out of our own creativity and imagination is eradicated in all moments. All filtering out of our own creativity and imagination is eradicated in all moments. Our fear of going insane if we delve into our creativity is eradicated in our moments. All fear of going insane if we delve into our creativity is eradicated in all moments. All fear of going insane if we delve into our creativity is eradicated in all moments. All fear of going insane if we delve into our creativity is eradicated in all moments. All fear of going insane if we delve into our creativity is eradicated in all moments. All fear of going insane if we delve into our creativity is eradicated in all moments. All demonizing of the rogue genius until they prove their worth is eradicated in all moments. All demonizing of the rogue genius until they prove their worth is eradicated in all moments. All demonizing of the rogue genius until they prove their worth is eradicated in all moments. All demonizing of the rogue genius until they prove their worth is eradicated in all moments. All demonizing of the rogue genius until they prove their worth is eradicated in all moments. All demonizing of the rogue genius until they prove their worth is eradicated in all moments. Jen, that's an interesting one, the idea of demonizing the rogue genius before they prove their worth. Um, so a lot of very talented, very well famous and well respected, particularly artistic people, uh, you know, would be considered to be, you know, a rogue genius. And um, but the interesting thing is that there are a lot of rogue genii out there. <laughs> Uh, that are doing their thing that have that that aren't famous, and so they're demonized for being just different. But there are a lot of very famous people that are really quite neurologically diverse, and um, then they're celebrated because they have proved their worth. Uh, they're yeah. famous. They're in the public eye. Absolutely, um, some of it, and. The thing is, their contribution to society is amazing, especially the musical artists. They can reach, you know, millions of people and soothe that pain with millions of people with their music, which they tap into because they're so deep in their thoughts and feelings. All blockages to everyone finding their rogue genius are eradicated in all moments. All blockages to everyone finding their rogue genius are eradicated in all moments. All blockages to everyone finding their rogue genius are eradicated in all moments. All blockages to everyone finding their rogue genius are eradicated in all moments. All blockages to everyone finding their rogue genius are eradicated in all moments. All blockages to everyone finding their rogue genius are eradicated in all moments. Perpetually swimming upstream to express our ingenuity is eradicated in all moments. Perpetually swimming upstream to express our ingenuity is eradicated in all moments. Perpetually swimming upstream to express our ingenuity is eradicated in all moments. Perpetually swim, swimming upstream to express our ingenuity is eradicated in all moments. Perpetually swimming upstream to express our ingenuity is eradicated in all moments. 
perpetually swimming upstream to express our ingenuity is eradicated in all moments. Being raped of our ingenuity is eradicated in all moments. Being raped of our ingenuity is eradicated in all moments. Being raped of our ingenuity is eradicated in all moments. Being raped of our ingenuity is eradicated in all moments. Being raped of our ingenuity is eradicated in all moments. Being raped of our ingenuity is eradicated in all moments. Overcompensating for our quirkiness is eradicated in all moments. Overcompensating for our quirkiness is eradicated in all moments. Overcompensating for our quirkiness is eradicated in all moments. Overcompensating for our quirkiness is eradicated in all moments. Overcompensating for our quirkiness is eradicated in all moments. Overcompensating for our quirkiness is eradicated in all moments. Wanting to kill ourselves to release the pain is eradicated in all moments. Wanting to kill ourselves to release the pain is eradicated in all moments. Wanting to kill ourselves to release the pain is eradicated in all moments. Wanting to kill ourselves to release the pain is eradicated in all moments. Wanting to kill ourselves to release the pain is eradicated in all moments. Wanting to kill ourselves to release the pain is eradicated in all moments. All psychic streams of energy that try to get us to kill ourselves are eradicated in all moments. All psychic streams of energy that try to get us to kill ourselves are eradicated in all moments. All psychic streams of energy that try to get us to kill ourselves are eradicated in all moments. All psychic streams of energy that try to get us to kill ourselves are eradicated in all moments. All psychic streams of energy that try to get us to kill ourselves are eradicated in all moments. All psychic streams of energy that try to get us to kill ourselves are eradicated in all moments. Forcing our children into a straitjacket of conformity is eradicated in all moments. Forcing our children into a straitjacket of conformity is eradicated in all moments. Forcing our children into a straitjacket of conformity is eradicated in all moments. Forcing our children into a straitjacket of conformity is eradicated in all mo moments. Forcing our children into a straitjacket of conformity is eradicated in all moments. Forcing our children into a straitjacket of conformity is eradicated in all moments. Suffering fools for conformity is eradicated in all moments. Suffering fools for conformity is eradicated in all moments. Suffering fools for conformity is eradicated in all moments. Suffering fools for conformity is eradicated in all moments. Suffering fools for conformity is eradicated in all moments. Suffering fools for conformity is eradicated in all moments. Projecting our insecurities onto those we deem different is eradicated in all moments. Projecting our insecurities onto those we deem different is eradicated in all moments. Projecting our insecurities onto those we deem different is eradicated in all moments. Projecting our insecurities onto those we deem different is eradicated in all moments. Projecting our insecurities onto those we deem different is eradicated in all moments. Projecting our insecurities onto those we deem different is eradicated in all moments. Feeling like an island unto ourselves is eradicated in all moments. Feeling like an island unto ourselves is eradicated in all moments. Feeling like an island unto ourselves is eradicated in all moments. Feeling like an island unto ourselves is eradicated in all moments. Feeling like an island unto ourselves is eradicated in all moments. Feeling like an island unto ourselves is eradicated in all moments. All blockages to receiving the love and support we deserve are removed in all moments. All blockages to receiving the love and support we deserve are removed in all moments. All blockages to receiving the love and support we deserve are removed in all moments. All blockages to receiving the love and support we deserve are removed in all moments. 
All blockages to receiving the love and support we deserve are removed in all moments. All blockages to receiving the love and support we deserve are removed in all moments. All beliefs that our idiosyncrasies deem us unworthy are eradicated in our moments. All beliefs that our idi idiosyncrasies deem us unworthy are eradicated in all moments. All beliefs that our idi idiosyncrasies deem us unworthy are eradicated in all moments. All beliefs that our idiosyncrasies deem us unworthy are eradicated in all moments. All beliefs that our idiosyncrasies deem us unworthy are eradicated in all moments. All beliefs that our idiosyncrasies deem us unworthy are eradicated in all moments. Forcing ourselves to behave, to placate an outer definition of normal is eradicated in all moments. Forcing ourselves to behave, to, to placate an outer definition of normal is eradicated in all moments. Forcing ourselves to behave, to placate an outer definition of normal is eradicated in all moments. Forcing ourselves to behave, to placate an outer definition of normal is eradicated in all moments. Forcing ourselves to behave, to placate an outer definition of normal is eradicated in all moments. Forcing ourselves to behave, to placate an outer definition of normal is eradicated in all moments. The belief that we are flawed for not feeling normal is eradicated in our moments. The belief that we are flawed for not feeling normal is eradicated in all moments. The belief that we are flawed for not feeling normal is eradicated in all moments. The belief that we are flawed for not feeling normal is eradicated in all moments. The belief that we are flawed for not feeling normal is eradicated in all moments. The belief we, that we are flawed for not feeling normal is eradicated in all moments. <clears throat> the aversion to communicating our personal stance on life is eradicated in our moments. The aversion to communicating our personal stance on life is eradicated in all moments. The aversion to communicating our personal stance on life is eradicated in all moments. The aversion to communicating our personal stance on life is eradicated in all moments. The aversion to communicating our personal stance on life is eradicated in all moments. The aversion to communicating our personal stance on life is eradicated in all moments. Being overlooked for being different is eradicated in all moments. Being overlooked for being different is eradicated in all moments. Being overlooked for being different is eradicated in all moments. Being overlooked for being different is eradicated in all moments. Being overlooked for being different is eradicated in all moments. Being overlooked for being different is eradicated in all moments. Suffering in silence 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 is eradicated in all moments. All aversion to differences is immediately eradicated in all moments. All aversion to differences is immediately eradicated in all moments. All aversion to differences is immediately eradicated in all moments. All aversion to differences is immediately eradicated in all moments. All aversion to differences is immediately eradicated in all moments. All aversion to differences is immediately eradicated in all moments. Being triggered for seeing others' uniqueness is eradicated in all moments. Being triggered for seeing others' uniqueness is eradicated in all moments. Being triggered for seeing others' uniqueness is eradicated in all moments. Being triggered for seeing others' uniqueness is eradicated in all moments. Being triggered for seeing others' uniqueness is eradicated in all moments. Being triggered for seeing others' uniqueness is eradicated in all moments. 
Tolerance and acceptance are adopted as the universal law of the land in all moments. Tolerance and acceptance are adopted as the universal law of the land in all moments. Tolerance and acceptance are adopted as the universal law of the land in all moments. Tolerance and acceptance are adopted as the universal law of the land in all moments. Tolerance and acceptance are adopted as the universal law of the land in all moments. Tolerance and acceptance are adopted as the universal law of the land in all moments. All beings are coaxed and expounded out of their shell in all moments. All beings are coaxed and expounded out of their shell in all moments. All beings are coaxed and expounded out of the shell in all moments. All beings are coaxed and expounded out of their shell in all moments. All beings are coaxed and expounded out of their shell in all moments. All beings are coaxed and expounded out of their shell in all moments. Humanity is immediately expounded through all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. Humanity is immediately expounded through all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. Humanity is immediately expounded through all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. Humanity is immediately expounded through all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. Humanity is immediately expounded through all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. Humanity is immediately expounded through all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. All humanity is centered and empowered in all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. All of humanity is centered and empowered through all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. All of humanity is centered and empowered through all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. All of humanity is centered and empowered through all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. All of humanity is centered and empowered through all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. All of humanity is centered and empowered through all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. All of humanity resonates, emanates, and is interconnected with all life and all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. All of humanity resonates, emanates, and is interconnected with all life in all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. All of humanity resonates, emanates, and is interconnected with all life in all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. All of humanity resonates, emanates, and is interconnected with all life in all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. All of humanity resonates, emanates, and is interconnected with all life in all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. All of humanity resonates, emanates, and is interconnected with all life in all beings relinquishing their shell in all moments. Take a deep breath, everyone. Good job. Uh, an important tapping event on World Mental Health Day. I'll guarantee you that there isn't another event out there in uh, coinciding with World Mental Health Day uh, as, well, similar to this and I would argue as profound as this. Yeah, it's it's a miracle that we're all here to do this and that, um, that, that all, a lot of different points of view are represented right here. It's kind of nice. All right. Thank you very much for those that are on the Zoom call for joining us yet again. Uh, the, your dedication is noted. <laughs> Tirelessly coming in on these Zoom calls day in, day out. We've got another about 10 or so of these events programmed up between now and November the 5th. So keep an eye out on those. Thanks, everyone, for joining us and uh, look forward to catching you next time. Bye for now. Bye for now, everyone. Thank you. Hi, and thanks for watching another one of our videos. All our content is available on social media and streamed in high definition, ad-free on the Genuine Healing website. If you appreciate the work that we're doing and you love the content we're creating, please consider becoming a Genuine Healing supporter. 
simply follow the link in the description below, select your level of support, and know that your financial contribution is directly helping us continue our profound work in healing all of humanity one soul at a time. Thanks for your support. Look forward to catching you next time and bye for now.